bubble. Stay, stay back, Grump. I'll be back. Hang it on five! Fire five. Japan's government and South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff both say North Korea has fired what appear to be projectiles toward the Sea of Japan on Saturday morning. Officials say the projectiles were fired from Kiteron in the province of Kanwon. South Korean media says a missile launched from one of North Korea's eastern provinces, which is on the opposite side of the Korean peninsula from Seoul, appears to have been a ballistic missile that flew about 150 miles and then landed in the ocean between Japan and the Korean peninsula. We have just learned that North Korea has just launched uh, what is being described as an unidentified projectile, a ballistic missile, we're told. This is the first missile launched by North Korea following sanctions imposed by the United Nations Security Council. The South's Yonhap News Agency reports that the North launched several projectiles traveled about 250 kilometers. U.S. Pacific Command says that it detected a launch of three short-range missiles over a 30-minute period from 6.49 to 7.19 a.m. The first and third missiles failed in flight. The second missile appears to have exploded almost immediately. South Korean government has convened its National Security Council to gather more information about the North's intentions. On July 4th, the North announced it successfully launched a ballistic missile. Despite the warm exchanges, the anniversary comes at a time when relations are strained mainly due to differing views on the THAAD missile defense system. According to our Kim Min-ji, Korea's political parties of all stripes are pushing for diplomatic efforts to turn things around. It's being called a lonely celebration. Unlike in the past when Korea and China hosted joint celebrations to mark their diplomatic anniversary, this year's has been scaled down in size and the participants do not include key government figures. A wall has come up between them since relations soured over Seoul's deployment of the THAAD missile defense system, which China claims will undercut its military capabilities. The ruling Democratic Party acknowledged that tensions are higher, but stressed that China is without a doubt an important partner for Korea. It said that the two have built a relationship of trust and understanding over the years through close communication, exchange and cooperation. It added that the leadership of the two sides share the idea of fostering close relations and highlighted the need to work together in light of the tense situation on the Korean Peninsula. The opposition parties agreed that Korea-China relations must not be allowed to deteriorate and more must be done to go forward. The main opposition Liberty Korea Party said that China is not on the same page as the Moon administration when it comes to North Korea, referring to his meeting with China's ambassador to Seoul. The fact that the ambassador wanted to meet our party shows that the Liberty Korea Party needs to work to see what ways there are to solve the issues regarding North Korea or the THAAD deployment, as well as the easing of tensions with China or even with the U.S. The minor opposition People's Party expressed regret over the ICA relationship, saying the government needs to do more on the diplomatic front with China to reach an understanding over that. The government has vowed to be in the driver's seat when it comes to the issue on the peninsula. However, there is no plan for the summit talks with President Xi Jinping, who holds the key here. The splinter conservative Patton Party called on the Moon administration to solve pending bilateral issues like that so that the two sides can come together and solve North Korea's nuclear issue.